We're cutting in a little late here because I lost some footage. It's okay, you didn't miss much and I think you can tell what's going on. So I'm just going to explain the project a bit before we get too far. This is meant to be a period correct scabbard for my 200 BC Roman Gladius. There aren't many archaeological examples, but for the most part they probably had wooden cores covered with leather and bound with iron. The early ones had two rings on one side to hang it from a shoulder belt, like the Celtic swords of the day, and later ones had two rings per side. I picked two because you don't see as many reproductions of that style. I'm using poplar because it's light, stable, and ugly, so it deserves to have a leather bag thrown over it. Originally, I carved a diamond cross-section to match the sword blade, but I found even with plenty of clearance it was easy for the sword to get wedged in place. So I switched over to a gouge and made the hole more elliptical. In case you haven't watched the sword video, I deliberately copied a bad sword that was made in a hurry. I'm carrying on that theme here to give myself some space for mistakes and shortcuts. All that's important is that the sword doesn't rattle but draws easily, and that it doesn't have tool marks that give it away as modern. There may be multiple examples, but I could only find one with any kind of measurements. I mean, I guess there could be more if I wanted to read French, but I don't. I'm pretty sure I got C's in that subject. Anyway, this is said example from Egypt. It looks like it flaked off the bottom of my 96 Geo Tracker, but the biggest piece shows that the wood was about 5 eighths of an inch thick. I had to cut the profile with the interior face up because that's where I drew my lines. This meant I could only cut one half at a time and I had to do some rather inelegant temporary fastening. I should have thought through this a little better. Whatever. Here I cleaned the wood down until it looked like I could round the edges down to about 5 eighths thickness. It turned out removing all that material allowed the wood to warp and the sword didn't fit anymore so I had to carve it out deeper. The next step was profiling the outside of the scabbard. I've seen a couple reconstructions that looked pretty flat, but that's wrong and lame. If it warps after this again, I might just set it on fire. Got half of it rounded out. Let's see if it warped again. Alright. I don't have to set it on fire yet. With both halves done, it was time to attach them together. I purposely left very little wood around the edges of the cavity so this scabbard wasn't too wide, and that meant limited space for fasteners. 
I ended up settling on linen cord. To make sure the holes ended up in the middle of the mating faces, I drilled from the inside first and then put the two halves together to mark the positions. I'm using a crank drill here just because I like working with my antiques. If I just sewed it together as is, the stitching would add unnecessary thickness, so I cut grooves between holes to make the linen sit flush. Somehow I got it in my head that if I sewed with the linen wet, it would shrink as it dried and pulled together. It didn't, and after a while it loosened up anyway. The next component was the leather covering. This is like the second thing I've done with leather, so my process is probably going to make anyone with experience cringe. Basically, I made a trash template that could only give me an accurate profile for the straight sides and just guessed how much extra material to leave around the tapered end. I'm using goat skin because it's cheap, thin, and the Romans used it for all kinds of stuff. After closing up one side, I put the wood in place and did a second round of guessing how much to trim the taper. I'm using hemp cord to sew it up because that's something the Romans could have used, but it's not like anyone's going to see it. If I hadn't already bought the spool for a pair of sandals without noticing it was fucking $30, I probably would have used something else. Turned out I guessed right for the straight sides, and cinching that up held the wood together better than the linen did. I probably could have gotten away with a couple pins for alignment and just relied on the leather to clamp the wood. I rubbed in some olive oil for water resistance. If my cheap sword came with a cheap scabbard, it's easy to imagine it wasn't dyed like we know others were. I think it looks nice anyway, and it will darken with exposure to sunlight. A few years ago, I started a blacksmithing club in college with some friends. I built this collapsible forge for several people to share before it got going, but we never actually got together off campus to do it. And by the time we worked through the whole bureaucratic nightmare of setting up a group to play with coal fire and red hot metal on campus, most of us were too busy to do much forging. So up until this point, the only finished objects I'd forged were a shitty coat hook, a shitty arrowhead, and two snake bracelets that were only not shitty because I ground off all the evidence of forging. This is why I didn't forge the sword. Despite my lack of experience, there's no way I was going to be satisfied with this scabbard if the metal components weren't forged. I've seen too many reproductions made with pristine, polished factory sheet metal. 
It's hard telling if iron scabbard parts were polished because they're all corroded to hell, but it's pretty obvious that the example I showed was hand forged and you just don't get that using mill steel. So I made it my goal to not leave any metal untouched by the hammer. This meant to match the 2mm thick sheet wrapped around the edge of the Egyptian find, I had to hammer the shit out of some hardware store flat bar. Once I had enough length, there were a few wiggles to straighten out. To fix this, I had to hammer on the inside of the curves. It doesn't take much to lengthen one side enough to push itself straight. Since I'm using the round face of the hammer, it's spreading the metal in all directions, so I used the opportunity to fill out a few low spots in the edge as well. fucking there yet? Yes, actually. I finished forging the stock just when the giant blisters I developed from hammering wrong were starting to concern me. Since the rest of the work would be done cold, I cycled everything through a red heat to soften it up. Next, I spent even more time hammering on the same two pieces of metal. This time the goal was to bend it into a U-shape that would closely fit the edges of the scabbard. It naturally bent itself into a semicircle, so occasionally I pushed it flat to match the scabbard profile. Obviously it would have been easier to work it hot with the forge rather than pushing all this cold metal around, but at the same time I didn't trust myself to do it quickly. The pieces were already thin, and if I took too many heat sticking around with every little adjustment it would oxidize away into nothing. I didn't have much control over how the profile twisted, but it was pretty easy to fix with a couple pairs of pliers. You know, up until this point I haven't done a whole lot of forging, hot or cold. But the more I work on this, the more I think the secret to doing it right is in a rule of thumb, and that is find what's wrong and hit it. You know, like this part's too bent, hit it. This part's too flat, hit it. This part's too thick, hit it. Just don't try it on people, unless they're a Nazi, and then there's a discussion to be had. With both sides conforming to the scabbard, I cut and bent a tap at the end of each to overlap in the middle. I cheated a bit and used the bench grinder to match them up. I'm deviating a little from the example anyway, it looks like both halves were just kind of smushed together, maybe even forge welded and capped by that knobby terminal. Since I have not yet successfully forge welded anything, I'm using rivets everywhere. I'm just using bits of an annealed nail. There will be two straps that encircle the scabbard and hold suspension rings. I started by using this shitty swaging tool to isolate a short section of material. I drew that material into a roughly octagonal rod. That's the section the ring will go around. Last thing I did while I had the forge going was flatten out the rest of the stock. The rest of the work could be done cold. So here's the hot forged piece I'm starting out with, and here's the first one I did off camera. With that one done, I could just match it rather than constantly slipping it on and off the scabbard.
keep in mind that for every one of these adjustments you see in the video, there were a bunch more that I left out. It took a lot of back and forth to get the shape just right, and if I tried to show everything, this video would be four times the length and almost as tedious to watch as it would be to make. Couldn't find any good pictures of any complete-ish iron scabbards like this, let alone the backs, so I don't know if it would have been common to forge weld these rather than rivet the ends together. In any case, I'm not good enough for that, so I just made sure to trim them to length with a chisel. Saw cuts in this particular material would be a dead giveaway that it was made with modern tools. In Roman times, holes were punched in iron, probably hot for something this thickness. So using a drill is cheating, but I didn't have the tools at the time to do it right. These rings probably would have also been punched, because I can't imagine forge welding the dinky little things was any easier. I just cut a short section of pipe and forged on it a bit to make it look more handmade. To make rivets, I mushroomed over the end of my nail before cutting it to length. I probably should have made them longer because all the extra material just squashed down until it filled the hole without forming a head, but this'll do. These straps had a tight press fit on the scabbard without any fasteners. That's pretty handy because I can't get them back off. Apparently one of my rivets is shaped so that it let the strap go on just fine, but if I try to back it off it tears the leather. They don't move around so I just left it with the friction fit. Less work anyway. This third collar is the most complicated because it has to act like a cap as well. That means a flange bent over the top, and that means it's a bitch to bend into shape. After working it cold for a bit, it was clear there is no way around using the forge this time. It was tricky to manage the heat. I couldn't help but heat most of it because it's small, and that meant it bent in places I didn't want it to. So I would quench part of it, but since it's thin, it would just cool off extra fast. Eventually I got it close enough and used an oak mandrel that I made to match the scabbard to close it up better. put off this last part for months because it seemed hard and I could get away without it for a while. It's the little knob that goes on the tip, and to make it easier I started with the CO2 canister because it's already pretty close to the shape. I poured in lead to keep it from flattening as I hammered a neck into it. The nail was just a convenient way to hold it. After some hammering the lead would start to squish out and I had to recast it. Once the neck was as skinny as it could get, I tried to make the transition sharper and just add hammer marks all the way around. It ended up less spherical terminal and more dickhead, but it's not like the Romans didn't use them for decoration everywhere. So 
So here it is. Every nice object needs a nice box to put it in, and like a child or cat, I think I got more out of the box. This was far more involved to build than the sword. You can see I started to polish one edge. I was going to make all of the components bare metal, but then I got them stuck together. I like to think if this was an actual artifact, maybe some apprentice started to polish it before the headsmith came along and said, quit fucking around with that, we have a shitload of these things to make. You can see in the contemporary funerary monuments that swords were worn on the right and awkwardly high, maybe so they wouldn't flop around as much in battle. I have longer arms than the average Roman, but it's pretty easy to draw. So thanks for sticking around to the end of my longest video yet. Feel free to subscribe if you're into both Roman shit and modern fabrication. Oh, god damn it. Forgot to put the ring on it.